ask you a question about Bonhoeffer? Of course you will. Um, something I've always wanted to ask. How could Bonhoeffer claim to be a pacifist and conspire to murder Hitler? How did that work? Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a really terrific question, actually, and, a, and, a, and a, a question that lots of people struggle with, especially Bonhoeffer scholars. So I'm nervous about saying something because everybody else might jump on me, but I'll give you my best explanation of it, which is, um, it, first of all, Bonhoeffer adhered to a, print, a Lutheran principle called the Two Kingdoms Principle, right. which says that there is a secular kingdom, the state, which has a set of authorities and obligations, and then there is a spiritual kingdom, mm -hmm. and part of the, which is the church. And part of the reason for that is that he didn't want the kind of um, coalescence of church and state that you find, say, in something like the Pope being, mm -hmm. you know, a, a monarch mm -hmm. as well. Uh, so that he has this Lutheran attitude, but under the one of the conditions for this, though, is that both recognise the authority of the other, and that the state has to protect mm -hmm. the spiritual kingdom as well. And under Hitler and Hitler's desire to create a unified Protestant church under the Reich, a Nazi propaganda church, what you actually see is an undermining of that spiritual kingdom, a breaking in uh, from the state into the spiritual. And Bonhoeffer thinks as a result of that, actually what you begin to do is break everything down. And so uh, under those conditions, he famously asked people just before he returned from New York where he was thinking about being in exile during the war, but he realised that his conscience couldn't allow. He shocked people by saying to people training for the ministry who were in his classes, would you grant absolution to somebody who murdered a tyrant? So he wrestles with this one condition, what happens when there is a tyrant that idea for a while. doing this. So this is obviously yeah. on his conscience. Now, Bonhoeffer considered all kinds, he really wrestled with this as a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, he was involved, as people might know, with the APFA, in a, the military intelligence in an inside organisation within that was trying to topple a Nazi state from within, uh, called the Schwarze Kapelle, uh, the Black Orchestra or something. Oskar Schindler was in mm -hmm. that uh, as well, a whole ra range of other people. Uh, and within that context, uh, Bonhoeffer is considered to be the conscience of it all. Um, and they're obviously plotting to assassinate him, famously the Wolf's Lair mm -hmm. attempt, which we know about him from Valkyrie. Uh, and in that context, Bonhoeffer really wonders about what he should do. Should he renounce his ordination vows? Can he no longer really profess to be a Christian? He even considers whether he should commit suicide in case he implicated somebody else because of what he knew of what was going on. So he recognises that he's in this extraordinary set of circumstances. Mm -hmm where you know pacifism might be fine in one set of circumstances in another set a bit more of a struggle but even then he doesn't say that this justifies it and i would say the biggest clue for this comes um, in bonhoeffer's ethics where he talks about two ideas one is the idea that it might be better to do evil than to be evil and i think he recognizes there that as somebody who is trying to be good mm -hmm. Perhaps it might be better for him to remove somebody who is evil, mm -hmm. even if that involves him doing an act of evil. But that's not a good act. No. He's still recognising that this is killing somebody, this runs against the commandments. And then, and this is where I'd see the real clue, Bonhoeffer, throughout all of his theological writings, particularly, I guess, when you get to the, the ethics, has this idea of Stellvertretungen, uh, vicarious substitutionary mm -hmm. um, action, that you might stand in the place of somebody else. So, and he sees this as being a model of what Christ does on the cross, that Christ accepts on the cross the evil, the guilt of the world. And he says, maybe the Christian in extreme circumstances is called to do that, is called to take upon herself the guilt of the world. Now that for me is a really interesting idea because what that does, yeah. one way of thinking about that is to say, what you might be doing is damning yourself for the sake of the other. It's not to justify the action that you're doing. You're still That's damning yourself if you blow Hitler up. Yeah. If, you, if you're involved in it's doing that. But it's an act of sacrifice. It might even be the eternal act of sacrifice. It might mm. preclude you from receiving mm -hmm. forgiveness. He wrestles, Bonhoeffer in fact wrestles with what it means to pray for a I mean, these are effectively suicide bombers. However much we might you know, want to justify what they're doing. It's a difficult mm. act. This is somebody bringing down the state from within. But, but I, I think as well Bonhoeffer would always want to say that this is in a context of resistance, this is in a context of mm -hmm. extremity, mm -hmm. of millions of people being killed. Mm -hmm. As part of the Schwarze Kapelle, as part of the advert, this kind of internal movement, he knew of some of the horrors, maybe not the full extent of them, but some of the horrors he was directly involved in smuggling Jews out of the country, mm -hmm. you know, 
he's in a he's in an extreme set of circumstances. So he never justifies killing. He never gives up on the idea that the gospel might at core be a story of peace. But he says maybe the role of the Christian is actually to end up taking the sin, the guilt of others upon themselves, damning yourself for the so sake of the world. Yeah. But the the parallel story that you've just drawn upon is the story of Jesus himself and in a similar situation in occupied territory. Mm-hmm. Um, but he didn't side with the zealots. No, he didn't, and that's a, you know that's a great way of assessing what, what happens. Um, but he did, and which bon- what Bonhoeffer would point to is that theologically he did take the guilt of others upon himself. Yeah. Yeah. He did take the guilt of the zealots upon himself, and Jesus' right. movement probably included zealots, reconstituted zealots. But you know the name. <laughs> well, you know the fact that somebody's carrying a sword in the Garden of Gethsemane shows that this is a possibility. The mm-hmm. fact that you know Jesus is himself. Somebody who gains political um, recognition, t- recognition and titles, even the act of going in to Jerusalem on a donkey through the right gate and all of that, all of that is a self conscious proclamation. Mm-hmm. And in fact, some New Testament scholars, I'm not a New Testament scholar, but I remember reading, some New Testament scholars would say that there's really hints of a political movement mm-hmm. underneath the text. Mm-hmm. So even say something like the story of the feeding of the 5,000 lists that people sit, that the people sat prazii, prazii which almost is an image of like people sitting ranks. Yeah. in ranks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. you know, I, 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 think, I think one of the things that for me is most interesting about Bonhoeffer is that he wrestles with the intricacies as a theologian, mm-hmm. the complexities of the text, what it means to be, um, you know, for, for Jesus a Jew in a context of resistance, and, and, and the complexities of the life that he lives in, in uh, Nazi Germany. Perhaps the most complex period of time to be a Christian yeah ever and we should note maybe that the vast 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 majority of christians didn't see that much trouble with siding with hitler you know, hitler asked for his 49th birthday that every pastor signed an oath of personal allegiance yeah. to him those who didn't ended up in concentration camps or they were conscripted into the army bonhoeffer only got away with it because he went to work for military intelligence but he right. was working right. as a double agent right. from within Fascinating reading of that, Tom. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Thank you very much.